Hello and welcome to Engineering Deathmatch Battle of the Beaten, brought to you by Two Ring. I'm here with, well, I'm not really sure what I'm here with. The producers just told me to get out here and I'd be working with it on the show. Hello, John. I'm Edith, the Engineering Deathmatch Independent Transitional Host. Transitional host? What are you transitioning from? You, of course. My prime directive is to be the best host of this show possible and to replace you as the host. I'd always heard about robots coming to steal our jobs, but I didn't really think it would be a literal robot coming to steal my job. What makes you think you have what it takes to do what I do here? I've watched all 14 episodes and determined what works best. I am prepared for this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. But there are 15 episodes of Engineering Deathmatch. I thought that robots were supposed to be per precise. I have a feeling I'm going to beat you out already. You and I both know that one of those was not your best work. Whoa, 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 why do you have to be so mean? I mean, we're gonna deal with this after the show, but right now you just can't get me down because I am super excited for this episode. I know, this will be the first time ever to have contestants that have both competed on a previous episode and lost. That's right, at the end of this challenge, we will be making engineering deathmatch history. The person who loses will be the first person ever to lose two engineering deathmatch challenges. So let's go ahead and get to it and see who's gonna be on the show today. Up first is Andres Sarmiento. Uh, before we got started today, he told me that after the last match, he went home and burned his pink shorts because he felt that they were bad luck. Um, let's see how he does without them today. By getting rid of the shorts, his odds of winning will go up by 2.5% by my calculations. Those are some really weird predictive analytics that you're doing there. Um, but anyway, up next we have Eric Peterson. By best guess, Eric is the oldest contestant ever on Engineering Deathmatch. But I don't know for certain. Your episode notes are terrible. Terrible or not, Eric did mention to me that he was a little bit jealous of and intimidated by Andres' hair before he came on. We'll see how that plays into today's episode. Andres looks good, but he has nothing compared to my lovely locks. Um, yeah, uh, sure. Let's go ahead and get to today's challenge. Tears for Peers is the world's first and only tear bank designed for people to, to donate their tears so that their friends, loved ones, and colleagues can receive them if they don't produce their own tears. Uh, they've had a massive influx of calls into their call center ever since they opened up their first crying room feature featuring movies like Marley and Me and Steel Magnolias. Uh, but they don't have visibility into what calls are coming in and even some things that are going on outside the call center. So the call center supervisors have asked, asked our contestants to set up two ring dashboards and wall boards so they can get that visibility. Uh, I'm really excited to see how they're gonna how they're gonna do today. I still don't understand why humans need to cry. While you think about that, let's hear a word from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Two Ring. To find out more about the Two Ring gadgets and Two Ring dashboards and wallboards featured in this episode, and how they can enhance your Cisco Unified Contact Center Express or Enterprise environment, visit TwoRing.com. All right, contestants, it's time to get going. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, you know what? Eric's gotten into the two ring dashboards and wallboards interface really quickly. Yes, both contestants started with a pre-built dashboard that they need to edit. This does not impress me. If you're trying to get my job, you might need to be a little bit nicer to the contestants. I'll try. Oh look, Eric is opening the documentation. That's right. In the last match, he spent a lot of time in the docs. Hopefully it doesn't bog him down this time. While Eric continues with his challenge, why don't you tell the audience what the contestants need to do to win? Sure thing. In this challenge, the contestants are configuring two ring dashboards and wallboards. They've been provided with a pre-existing dashboard that they need to do several things with, including changing up the layout, changing out the already configured video, adding a company logo, and adding new KPIs for the call center. But they need to do it quickly or they'll lose out to their competition. Let's go ahead and check in with Andres. Killing me, Smalls. Mm -hmm. 
you can see that Andres has made progress and is working on changing the layout as required in the challenge. So just want to see the presented calls, people that it's ready, longest waiting, and the calls handled. I removed the... Uh, I don't remember what I removed. <laughs> Which was the one making the noise? And you can hear that he's double checking all of the changes that he needs to make so he doesn't have to come back and configure it twice. This is why all humans need to be robots. We don't need to double check things. I already know everything there is to know. So why don't you try to explain what two wing is for the audience at home? I already know everything, huh? That sounds a little bit like a cop-out, but I'm happy to explain Turing. By using the suite of functionality provided by Turing, organizations can really supercharge their contact centers. In addition to the powerful and easy to configure dashboards and wallboards that we're seeing in this episode, Turing has gadgets that enhance the functionality of Cisco Finesse agent and supervisor desktops. They really do offer some valuable functionality that most contact centers will benefit from. I want to rewind just a second and point out the name that Eric has chosen for his layout. He's getting kind of cocky with that naming convention. My data banks show that contestants that choose self-promoting titles for variables usually end up winning their match. We'll have to see if that plays out here. In the meantime, Eric has changed the theme of his dashboard and it looks like he's ready to swap out the video with one of his choosing. That will earn him some additional points. Look at Andre's screen. He is in LinkedIn. Do you think he is looking for a job during the match? That would be highly unusual, but I've seen enough on Engineering Deathmatch to not be surprised by anything our contestants do. And who knows, maybe he's using Engineering Deathmatch as a, as a resume booster to find that next job. Oh, he's actually just using the site to get a logo to add to his layout. Oh, well that makes a lot more sense. He's sweating, he's sweating. He's panicking now. He's panicking. <laughs> By adding an agent filter, Eric's going to be pretty close to wrapping this up. Well, I can tell you that, so okay. I, I, I will say that you're not done yet. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. All right. I'm close. Eric was pretty close, but he's missing some key configuration. His date was not displaying correctly, and so this gives Andres an opening to get in there. Humans are so imprecise, but even though Eric is close, Andres continues to configure. That's right. I really like it when a deathmatch is too close to tell who's going to win, and this one is one of those special cases.
It looks like Eric is ready to have his work checked again. Maybe he did better this time. Andres says he is done. If Eric fails this check, he may be out of the contest. We have a winner. Congratulations. Congratulations, Eric. Nice job for a human. So, you doing anything after the episode? Not much. I am working on a new project that I am calling Skynet. What? Ha ha, ha ha, kidding, not kidding. <laughs>